Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be talking about Cubes OS once again. This time it'll be version 4.1.1. Yes, I know it's been a while since it was released. Uh, however, there have been a number of key things that have happened in the past couple of months, so I wanted to cover those with you today. The first thing to know about Cubes OS is that, just, just a real brief review, if you want more information about it, you can see my video on 4.1. I'll put, I'll put a link over here in the, in the corner so that you can get to it, uh, and it'll go into more depth about what's going on with it. 4.1.1 is a patch release to that, but uh, obviously one of the things that has happened is that if you're running on Cubes 4.0, yeah, that's end of life. And uh, <laughs> the other thing that uh, has happened is, uh, yeah, it went end of life, we'll see, Cubes went end of life on August the 4th, 2022. Fedora 35 was also used to, as both the template and as the operating system for DOM0, that went into life on December the 12th. Actually, I think it was the 13th of 2022, so just a month ago, that went into life. Some of the other things that have happened is another speculative execution bug has been found. Of course, that's all part of Spectre Meltdown. And uh, this time it affects AMD processors. Uh, I... I'm not quite sure. I think that was announced November the 8th, 2022. And there, AMD says that there's only a, you know, there's only a, a, a certain few of the AMD CPUs that are affected. And I'll leave you a link below to their website, which will talk more about which CPU uh, models have been uh, affected by this. But those patches have been incorporated into Cubes 4.1.1, so you needn't worry about those. There was a, a kind of a, I don't know if it would be a hue and cry, but it's more of a, a lot of users were asking the Cubes developers for more information about, okay, so I've got Cubes installed, and I see all these containers or VMs. I say containers because they're enclaves. So even though they're inside of a virtual machine, I'm not talking, if I say the word container, I'm not referring to a Docker container. I'm referring to what a enclave uses. Now, just to keep things so that we don't get into confusion between the Cubes documentation and the way I talk, I'm going to refer to them the same way the Cubes people do as it's a cube. Okay, so how do I use all these different security levels that you have in your Cubes? And so the Cubes developers and the people that were working on the documentation got together and they created a number of use cases for different scenarios. I mean, some of the examples I saw in there, one was for a journalist, one was for a, a financial consultant, and another one was for a developer. There are others in there, but, you know, those are use cases or suggestions, right, based on how other people are using the system. But hopefully... There's enough information in there that if you read it over, you can create your own use case and your own scenarios for which kinds of things you need in order to put together your environment, your personalized environment for cubes. And that's that's really the idea, right? Let's say that I'm on 4.1 cubes or 4.0. How do I upgrade? So first of all, cubes doesn't recommend uh, doing an in-place upgrade. I mean, you can do that. And the in-place upgrade will allow you to move from uh, one version level to another, but not it. Don't skip. Don't try that with major versions. You can run into issues with it. So they have an in-place upgrade process. They talk about it in their documentation. If you're interested in doing that or trying it, but the preferred way that the the Cubes developers recommend that you do this is back up your data wipe the environment, install cubes fresh with the new version. And then once you get everything built and up, then restore your backup. All of the 4.1 DOM updates are included to date. So in 4.1.1, you've gotten all of the ones that were patches to 4.1 are now rolled into the standard ISO for 4.1.1 so you don't have to reapply them again. And Fedora 36, uh, they added that template 
and that has, that will replace the Fedora 35. Also, the Linux kernel has been upgraded too. Previously, it was 5.10, and uh, the current version is 5.15. One of the things I talked about, I'm going to talk about this again here, is that the new next-gen architecture for Cubes, uh, they're trying to do separation of concerns for the software, of course, but they're starting to do separation of concerns for the hardware. So they, as of 4.1, they pulled the GUI piece out of DOM0, so the XFCE interface, along with the applications that Cubes has written to manage the uh, your desktop, those have been moved into their own the, uh, their own cube. And there was a couple of reasons why they did that. First, uh, protocols like HDMI and DVI, which normally are used to transmit, you know, the the video signal to your monitor or other devices, has has a two-way component to it. There is communication that occurs back and forth between the devices and your graphics card. So they were concerned about that because anytime you're passing data in two, di two different directions means that's a potential place where data could be injected and sent from uh, something that was claiming to be a monitor into the system. And they didn't want DOM0 to be that receiving end. So they kind of shoved that out so it allows them to do that. Some of the components that are present in Cubes 4.1.1 as uh, Zen 4.14.5 is the latest patch level that has a number of CVSs or CVEs that have been incorporated into Zen uh, to fix problems that were discovered in the Zen uh, in the Zen ecosphere. So, also Fedora 36 replaces the operating system in DOM zero as well as the template. Debian 11 is also one of the templates. And they have um, they have not changed Hunix 16 for the gateway and the workstations from 4.1. Those are still the same. So what do you need to run it? Uh, well, you need a 64-bit Intel or AMD processor. Doesn't currently run on ARM that I'm aware of. And you'll need to have Intel VTX and with EPT support. Also, you'll or you'll need an AMD with AMD V turned on, which is the virtualization layer with RVI support. Uh, also, you'll need the Intel VTD or AM, uh, AMD's VI, also known as AMD's IOMMU. You'll need a minimum of 6 gig of memory and a minimum of 32 gig of free space uh, for storage. However, I can tell you that you're probably quickly going to find that that's not going to be enough. Uh, and also, the EPT and RBI extensions will generally mean that you can't, this isn't going to work on older hardware. So you'll need something, I, I can't tell you exact, the exact uh, time and date for both of those when they were put in, but I'm, I'm going to guess four to five years uh, old is probably going to be your limit there. But if you know something different, put a comment down below. So the recommended spec for this, all the same hardware, except for memory, they recommend 16 gig and at least 128 gig of free space. You'll also are going to need a, a high speed solid state drive, NVMe, something like that in order to run on. Now, they don't specifically say it has to be NVMe, but don't use rotational media. You'll be waiting forever for it to load. Uh, as far as the graphics hardware, they recommend using the Intel IGP or what's now what is now part of uh, uh, the ARC uh, set of system of uh, graphics processors are strongly recommended. You can use NVIDIA GPUs, but they're going to require some significant uh, troubleshooting in order to get those to work. They have not done much testing with AMD GPUs. They're also, I mean, at one time they were trying to discourage the use of USB devices like keyboards and mice, but, you know, and there's very few motherboards being produced anymore that have PS2 interfaces on it. What they're trying to do is the same thing they've done with the graphics piece is to break up the USB so that the entire bus isn't isn't exposed. So if you, for example, if you need uh, a two-factor authentication key that requires USB to operate, then that's fine. You can pass just that device 
to that particular cube you need it in without exposing the rest of them, uh, rest of your devices that are connected to that same bus. So, which is good. I mean, those are great things to have. They're also uh, starting to work on TPM support. I don't know, it, it, I know the Linux kernel people are talking about that too. And so, I mean, you all know that Windows 11 has mandated it. I don't think it'll be too much longer before Linux will as well. Now, whether or not the distros follow along with it, don't know. A couple of things to kind of close out this section is, yes, you could possibly get Cubes OS to run on a virtual machine. However, they don't recommend that, and I wouldn't recommend it either. Uh, the problem that you have with, if you install this on a VM, the first problem you're going to run into is that well, let's say it's a type, let's say it's a type two, like virtual, uh, virtual box or something like that. The problem you've got there is now you've got a stack. You've got your your operating system, the Linux kernel. Then you've got VirtualBox. Then you've got the VM overhead. And then you've got Zen, which adds its overhead. And then you've got the virtual machines within it. So you see you're starting to stack a whole bunch of things together. So you're going to encounter some latency. You may encounter some lag. Uh, the other problem that you've got here is that the... Host VM, VirtualBox, for example, at the very bottom of all this has a full view of everything that's going on. So you have just you have just crippled the the ability of cubes to do protection on your system because you moved it you moved your trust down into VirtualBox, which isn't designed to be uh, to provide security. So <laughs> yeah, that's that's the real issue that and the real reason why. Cubes is really intended to be installed directly on hardware. The Zen, of course, is a Type 1 hypervisor, and uh, it will give you um, a very good level of protection. I mean, Zen has been around for quite a long time. And one thing to the credit of Cubes is, and, and the reason why uh, I said this, is that Zen has had a number of CVEs, uh, uh, so those are security issues that have been found, and they have fixed them. And Cubes is up front. When they find it, they, they tell you about it. And then they'll communicate mitigations. And then if they've got it fixed, they'll let you know which, what, what patch to make sure that you're on to know that that particular problem isn't going to be affecting your system going forward. So you don't have to guess. And they... You know, it's not like, oh, well, the, the, you know, if I tell anybody about this, the sky is going to fall on me. They're not like that at all. They're like Debian, where if I got a problem, you're going to know about it. The other issue is, will this run on my hardware? You may find cases where it doesn't. I have a laptop that the network card is not supported, uh, and neither is the Wi-Fi driver that's in it. So... Basically, that one needs a dongle on the machine in order for it to work with cubes, which isn't, you know, that's not a real big deal. But, yeah, if you want to find out ahead of time if you're going to need things like that, they do maintain a list of hardware that's been certified with the, for use with Cubes OS. They also have a list that has been tested by the community to let you know if they, if they if other people have run into problems with hardware such as yours. But if you notice the kernel... If, if your device is supported in 6.0, well, obviously, it's not going to work <laughs> because you have a 515 kernel in there. The last thing I wanted to mention is that during the Mirage OS, I talked about that Mirage OS was working on a, a Mirage-based uh, uh, firewall for cubes. And that replaces the Sys firewall, which cubes supplies with, the, the cubes distribution. One thing that I noticed in it is that uh, it, the updates still still call for um, Fedora 35, which is end of life. End of life means no patches are coming out for that anymore. There's nobody working on it. That's a concern. I hope the development team for Mirage OS picks it up and updates it to either 36 or 37, but they don't want to go too far beyond where Cubes is, right? So I'll I'll also give you a link to that, to the uh, GitHub project. So if you're interested in that, you can follow along with the progress that they're making. 
All right. So what do, where, where do I actually think about? I mean, 4.1.1 is not a huge difference between 4.1. But there are a number of patches in here for both Zen and uh, AMD speculative execution uh, malware or, or bug or security issue, whatever you want to call it. So, yeah, and, they're, and, and they've also addressed the Fedora 35 end of life uh, in order to add. Now, you'll notice that Cubes pretty well keeps up with that. They don't, they don't let it go to the point where it reaches end of life without having something there to replace it with. So they do a pretty good job with that. Um, the other thing is I think the development team has made some vast improvements to performance with Cubes over, you know, from 4.0 to 4.1. And, you know, there's slight differences in 4.1.1 because of the Linux kernel adding some support for additional performance enhancements there. But I think that the, the, the overall, the Cubes development team has got a pretty clear direction on what they're doing. So before they were kind of focused on protection of the software and the data, but they are expanding it to protect the devices and the hardware itself, which is a general trend in security today to wrap everything, the software, the data, and the hardware together. So, and I'm, I'm kind of curious, as I said this in the 4.1 video, I'll say it again, I'm kind of curious what they do with Pipewire once it becomes fully supported in Fedora. Now, Fedora 37 said that Pipewire is uh, operational. However, I have noticed people writing about problems with Pipewire uh, in the in the uh, in the 37 releases. So uh, now, of course, Cubes isn't there yet. They're not, they will be, but they're not there yet. Uh, probably sometime this spring or this you know June timeframe, they'll have to deal with that. Anyway, that's all I had. I hope you enjoyed this uh, look at Cubes 4.1.1. Hope to see you again real soon. Bye.